right, Dana, thanks so much. 8.33, it was an emotional courtroom drama we all watched unfold yesterday right here on Good Day Columbus. Ariel Castro, the Cleveland man who held three young women captive for nearly a decade, one for more than a decade, sentenced to life plus 1,000 years in prison. One of his victims, Michelle Knight, went face to face with him. She bravely spoke of her ordeal and, and talked about her strength through all of this. Castro himself spoke for nearly 20 minutes, denying really all the allegations against him and blamed everyone from the FBI to the victims themselves. Just unbelievable, uh, unbelievable to watch yesterday what, what unfolded in that courtroom. Well, yeah, and many of us, of course, wondering what's going through the mind of someone who can deny these kind of things. And we're very happy to be joined by Dr. Bob Stinson. He's a uh, forensic psychologist. Thanks so much for joining Thank you us so much. today. You've been watching this unfold. What were your initial impressions when you listened to Ariel Castro speak? Well, you know, I, when I listened to him speak, I, I had confirmation of some of the initial uh, thoughts I had uh, about him, which was I was concerned that this was a psychopath. I was concerned mm -hmm. that he was somebody who was a sexual sadist, perhaps. Um, so he, he impressed me in his statement yesterday as a psychopath. If we think about what a psychopath is, it's somebody who maybe is superficially charming. So, you know, he had the ability to allure these young ladies in a decade ago. It's somebody who's grandiose in his perceptions of himself. Uh, so when we listened to him in a statement yesterday, he's talking about he's a good worker. His, his daughter would say he's the best daddy. Yeah. Um, that he, he's never done anything wrong. He so, took a facade almost like a wall. Yeah, he's yeah. got this... He's got this false sense of who he is, is is so much more grandiose than what the reality is. He's also consistent with the psychopath, manipulative, pathological lying. I mean, for 10 plus years to his friends and family, uh, he lacks all remorse. He has no real emotion, no empathy. And I think that is, you know, we were watching this and, and I will tell you, and I'm sure you were doing the exact same thing at home. Listening to him, I was yelling out loud at the TV. <laughs> yeah yelling, how could this man not be sorry? How could he be blaming everyone but himself? So let's take a listen in just a very short, uh, a short little soundbite of what he said yesterday to remind everybody. These people are trying to paint me as a monster and I'm not a monster. I'm sick. What do you make of that? Yeah, so so I'm not a monster. Well, you've done some monstrous acts, right? He's he's not sick. If he was sick, they, they had an evaluation done. If he was sick, um, things would have went a different way. Psychopathy, if we want to talk about whether it's sick or not sick, okay, I can tell you this, there's no effective treatment for it. So it's not like you can give him medication and he can become a, a, a functioning member of society. We, we can't give him medication. That's not going to change him. Uh, there's some evidence that if we try psychotherapy on him, it's just going to make him a better psychopath, a, a, a oh. better offender, so we don't want to do that. So our best bet is to contain this guy, lock him up and contain him. So when he talked about the fact that he, does he really believe that the sex between, um, the sex, it was rape, between himself and these victims, one resulting in a child, was really consensual because he spoke about how he thought at all, most if not all of the sexual um, intercourse between him and his, these victims was consensual. Yeah. Is that even, does he really believe the stuff he was saying? He, he probably is so distorted in his thinking and his perception of reality, not in a psychotic way, but just in a, in a criminogenic way, in a, in a criminal way, he is so distorted in his thinking that he probably does think it was consensual. Okay. Well, they didn't bite me. Well, that's because you probably beat them down before or, or you threatened them, so they were scared. Um, so it, when we look at his, his distortions in his thought, he denies, he minimizes, he blames others, all sorts of others. Uh, he, he pulls out little things that he did and says, that, that shows that I'm a good person. So he just has a very distorted way of viewing who he is. And so he probably does at some level believe that. And on the, and on the flip side, we got to hear from Michelle Knight, of course, one of the victims. She spoke out. Do we have a, do we have a, a we sound bite from her? We can hear what she has to say because she is telling him exactly what it was like to be in his care. Gina was my team teammate. She never let me fall. I never let her fall. She nursed me back to health when I was dying from his abuse. My friendship with her is the only thing that was good out of this situation. We said we will someday make it out alive, and we did. What went through your mind as you're listening to this? It sounds to me like the, the relationships are really what kept these women alive. I think the relationships were, would, were very important for these women. Uh, it, had they been by themselves, especially for 10 years, undoubtedly they would have ended up feeling hopeless, uh, helpless, uh, perhaps even wanting to die rather than get out. Uh, instead, 
they, you heard her, we, we promised each other we'd get through this. So they, they provided support for each other, they maintained hope, uh, and they, they left open the opportunity that when we have, or they left open the possibility that when we have the opportunity, we'll do something to help ourselves. A big question I had was, and, and when, this, when this case first came to light, how shocking it was that we saw photos um, taken by, by Ariel Castro's son, showing the locks on the doors, yeah. and, and just the way the home was. How, all I could ask was how in the world did no one not suspect something? How is it possible to have these women living in your house for 10 years and no one noticed something? How, how, does, it, how does that happen? And, and did these people know and just not, not want to know? Yeah, I think there are probably a couple of things going on here. Uh, one, if we look at his, fam his son, for example, his son talked about the abusive history. Um, of his father abusing his mother, of his father being violent with discipline with him. So my guess is that his son, um, one, knew that his dad wasn't quite right, mm -hmm. and two, knew not to question his dad. You don't go to. He was probably don't... afraid of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been abused. He's seen his mom abused. You don't go to dad's house and question why he's got padlocks on the doors. He just does. Um, in terms of the neighbors, my guess is that there probably were signs there, but maybe in that neighborhood, maybe more generally, we're kind of a society where we're. We don't want to butt in. Uh, I think years ago that that was the other the, the opposite end was uh, was the case. We would we would everybody would. But he maintained a relationship with with a girlfriend who who called it normal. She said there was no abuse to her. It was a very normal boyfriend girlfriend relationship. How how did he hide this from her? Is it just that kind of mind is just deviant? Yeah, I think it, you know when we talked about a psychopath, conning manipulative. I mean, they, they are running a charade on everybody so that they can get their needs met. I don't think he was probably honest with anybody in his life, not his girlfriend, not his son, not his yeah. spouse. Not himself. Not, not himself. And, and certainly not with the viewers of his statement yesterday. Yeah. How did the victims recover from this? Because, I mean, you saw Michelle, she had the strength to come up and, and do that. And I certainly don't blame the other two women for not being able to get up there. They had those statements, those emotional statements. How do they recover from something like this? And are they able to? Well, you know, I guess stating the obvious, it's going to be a long haul for them. Uh, and it's going to be very individualized. The three of them, even though they've gone through the exact same experiences, will probably have three very different recovery processes. Uh, one of them may need to talk about it and talk about it frequently. Another may say, I need my space and, and I'm not comfortable talking about it. Uh, what we can be fairly confident in is that they've had unbelievable experiences that nobody can fully appreciate unless they've been there. So they do have each other. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think will be helpful to them going forward. But they're going to have a long way to go. And it, it, they may never get back to what we would consider normal. Do you think they will be able to have what we would consider normalized in the sense, do you think they will be able to ever trust anybody again, have relationships with, with you know, significant others? That's all I could think of is when I see these young girls, that their lives, they may be free in a sense, but they're, they're going to always be imprisoned by what, was happened, to, what happened to them. Well, I, I think you said it exactly right. They will always be imprisoned by what happened. Now, they, they may be able to break out of that to some extent. I'm hopeful that they will be able to do that, that they'll be productive, that they'll be healthy, that they'll have good relationships. But this will never disappear. Uh, it will always it will impact on their relationships now hopefully they can still go on and have a healthy relationship um, and I, I have hope for that but this will impact on their relationships as they go forward uh -huh. wow. well dr. Bob Simpson we certainly appreciate you coming in today to share some insight into what's been uh, it's really gripped this state I know across the world over the last several months Bob thanks. thank you so much thank you we'll be right back